Yo what's up guys and welcome back to Boundary Break, the series where I get to show you an exclusive look around the outsides of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. In today's episode we're going to be checking out Villa, Yacht and Theme Park. If you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and leave a like and let me know down in the comments which maps you would like to see in the next episode. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Now starting off with Villa, it's one of the larger maps in the game located in Tuscany in Italy with lots of rolling hills and beautiful landscapes surrounding it. Now this map is packed full of easter eggs and I won't be able to go through all of them in this video but let me know if you want to see a more in-depth video to Villa every single easter egg because there are loads. It is a very beautiful map so without further ado let's get started. Now starting off up on the roof of Villa and it's already clear to see the amount of detail that Ubisoft have put into the outside of the map. All of the rolling hills, the trees, the vineyards, everything, you name it, it's there. But to start off with, we're going to head north over to the neighbouring town to one of the more common, more well-known easter eggs in the map. And you can actually see it yourself with someone like Callie from within the confines of the map. Now on my way over to there, I was very much weirded out to find that there was this invisible floating patch of grass. But not just any invisible floating patch of grass, you could actually walk up it as there was collision on the objects. I I don't have the faintest idea why this is here, why it's only a small square, but um, it's there, so yeah. But anyway, over to the town. Now a lot of you may already know where I'm going with this, but on the top of the spire of the tallest tower in this town over here, there's a cool little easter egg referencing the Assassin's Creed franchise. Now like I said at the start, this map is full of Assassin's Creed references, as this map villa is actually owned by the Vince Guerra family from Assassin's Creed. Now I've never played Assassin's Creed myself, so I don't know the context to that, but a lot of you Assassin's Creed fans will understand that. But anyway, this cool little cutout of the Assassin's Creed character sitting on top of the spire is, like I said, a very cute little reference to the game. Now as I said before, this easter egg is quite well known, but did you know there's actually a second one? Now I'm not sure how many people know this, but there's an identical spire on a different building with the same easter egg cardboard cutout. Now because this tower is slightly smaller, we can actually get closer to it and get a better look. But once again, it's exactly the same as the one shown before, and you can get a really close look here. Now as usual, I wanted to see how far away from the map I could actually go. As I was running along, you could see all of the small little details really far out from the main part of the map. And it does make you question why some of these details are here, seeing as how no one would ever actually see them once they're playing the game. But I don't know, maybe it's just a bit of a test area for Ubisoft. Now as I go further, you can clearly see where the map starts to fall apart, as once again, as usual, you see the sun rays coming up from below. I kept on pushing past the map until I was squashed by a pepperoni pizza and died. Back over to the ruins spawn now and this well here is another one of the more well known easter eggs, pun most definitely intended. I was able to get inside and then very quickly realised I was stuck. Now this easter egg is home to some sort of sound effect of a monster screaming at the bottom of the well but it turned out that I was the monster all along. Not being able to bear the insanity, I decided to kill myself. Back outside of the map once again, but this time over on the east, and here you can see all of the Vince Guerra family's drugs. Now because I'm an ignorant fool, and I refuse to believe that this is anything other than drugs, I have made up my mind. Just think about how many drugs you can do with all of these. Man, they must be so cool. If we go instead over to the west of the map, we can see very similar surroundings, but over on the horizon what seems to be the sea. Now this wasn't actually the water, it was just the edge of the map, but as we come over this hill here, you can see in parts of the map that are completely out of sight, where Ubisoft have just carved away at the underneath of a lot of the hills and made them flat. Now once again, if we start back at the ruin spawn, over to the left you may have noticed this small building before. I didn't notice this till right at the very end, so I decided to go and have a look. This here is actually one of the cooler, more crazy easter eggs, as inside of this building there is a tombstone with the lid halfway off. 
Now on the front of the tombstone you can also find the name Vince Aguera, which of course, like I've said before, is the name of the family that owns Villa. Now I don't know whether the lid being half off has any symbolism, I'm sure there must be, but any of you Assassin's Creed fans, please let me know what you think of this, as I myself had never seen this before today. An even cooler thing about it is that this door on the front you can actually destroy and reveal the name to the outside, so maybe try this out next time you're on Villa. Moving on now to map number two of today's video, Yacht. Now Yacht is not a very popular map, I don't particularly mind it, but a lot of the Siege community don't like it themselves. But I think the more intriguing thing about Yacht is the map itself. When you stop and think about it, it really is kind of creepy what's going on. There are clues everywhere that a lot of people seem to overlook that I'll be showing you in this. Like I've said, I do think there's more to Yacht than meets the eye, so we'll see if we can have a deeper look ourselves. Starting off on the roof of the yacht, and as you look out, you can clearly already tell that there's not too much going on outside of the map in terms of detailing. It's a lot of ice and a lot of water. Nonetheless, I still felt the need to go and explore to see if there was anything cool. I began to head northwest and very quickly spotted this arch in the ice quite far ahead. Now this clearly does just act as a background, as you can still see this from parts of the map yourself but it's still cool to notice that Ubisoft at least takes some care with their map design, even in some of the more basic environments. As I headed through the arch and out the other side, I spotted some sort of silhouette in the background. Now I tried to get closer and I couldn't really make out what it was exactly. As we turn back, you can see how far away we are heading from the map now, trying to get closer to this object. Now unfortunately, I wasn't able to get too close to this silhouette in the background without freezing to death and dying. Once again starting back over at the main part of the map, by the south, on the south side. You can see this cool little speedboat here and we can get a bit more of an idea about what's going on. Here you can see on the boat the JTF2 logo, which of course is the CTU that Frost and Buck come from. Now of course this isn't new information as Yacht was added in Operation Black Ice at the same time as these two operators, but it is still a cool little detail. But what we're paying a bit more attention to is the track that this boat has taken. Now in every single map there seems to be some sort of vehicle that the operators have used to get to the map, whether it's a helicopter, some cars, or in this case a boat. And if we follow the broken ice out, we can see some sort of larger ship out off the shore. Now as we get closer to the ship, unfortunately there are no markings that give away where it's come from or what country it's from. But what I do think it's interesting to remember is that Ubisoft have confirmed that the games are in fact simulations for training for the operators. So this is obviously the track from which the smaller speedboat which I just showed you has taken from this boat. If we head over now to the submarine spawn on the map, this is where we'll get to take a closer look at the large submarine that's just docked off the edge of the yacht. Now in the map description for yacht, it says that Rainbow Six has been sent to secure this stranded vessel as an unidentified submarine has docked near the yacht. Now this clearly is the submarine in question. And it's quite strange to think that it's unidentified. We don't know whether it's from a country or a terrorist group, which I think adds to the level of mystery behind this map, as this is just no ordinary submarine. Now moving on to the final map of the day, Theme Park, and at this point once again I must ask if you have reached to this point in the video please do consider leaving a like and subscribing because these videos do take a lot of time and effort for me. And whilst you're down there please let me know what maps you want to see in the next one. But anyway with Theme Park it's one of the few maps that have received a rework which a lot of people would agree has changed it for the better. Now this map is of course set in Hong Kong just off the coast of the city itself which you can see in the background but I've always thought it's one of the more cooler maps as it's quite a unique environment but anyway without further ado let's get into it. Now starting off straight away at the main entrance and I want to point out the irony in the name of this theme park Rainbow Funland because I can't remember the last time anyone's had fun in this game. 
If we head out of the main entrance which is blocked off by these vans, we can really get a good look at the outside of the map and the detail of all of the roller coasters that Ubisoft have added. Now I've always looked out on this map and thought it was such a cool design with all of the roller coasters and amusement rides scattered on the outside. Now although these roller coasters are very old and dirty, I did follow it along and they do both complete a full loop, which I think is definitely a good attention to detail. Now this entrance here into the park clearly reminded me of Planet Coaster if any of you have played this game because as soon as I went through the entrance I was teleported to another world. If we head back over closer to the map to the main attraction, you can see this gigantic ferris wheel just behind the bumper cars. Now what I found really creepy about this was that this ferris wheel was still moving, not completing full rotations but rather swaying side to side in the wind. If we go back over to the bumper cars spawn and head out behind us, we can see the city of Hong Kong off the shore of Theme Park. Now similar to House, this is a cool silhouette when you're far away, but unlike House, you can actually get up close to this city and walk in between the buildings. Now as we get really close to these buildings, you can see that they are floating above the ground. And similar to Bank like we saw last time, in the reflection of the windows, you can see a picture of the map that we left behind us. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's episode of Boundary Break. I really hope you have all enjoyed and remember to like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and let me know which maps you want to see next time and I'll see you guys later.